What's up, Fever Freaks? It's time for another Groovology session, but uh, from this Thursday, I'm starting at uh, 4, be weekly, every second of the week. Excellent show. The Ace of Clubs. Excellent show by the Ace of Clubs. <laughs> Laughing here like a... Um... Anyway, it's me, Vic Vixen, and um, another Groovology session with, um, I must say, the best mix uh, in my Groovology podcast series uh, so far. And since this is the first time um, in this uh, drive time from four o'clock, uh, I'm sure Dean w won't... Um, wouldn't mind a few cans here, yeah? <laughs> no, I just know that he went on holiday, so that's our boss for all of you who don't know. Okay, I have one hour too, and uh, loads of uh, new tunes that I prepared here for you. That's gonna be first uh, hour of the show. And then uh, last hour of the show, you can uh, listen uh, to our little chat, me and Nikki, that we did the other day. And then uh, one hour of pure pleasure and deepness from uh, Vancouver. First track of the day, Amensha and the track called uh, Miracle Devange, Armen Miran remix, out on uh, Soul Selecta a few days ago, if I'm right. If you want to join us, um, 085-7833-733, or you can just uh, join us uh, on live Facebook. Fever.ie. Stay tuned.
Just uh, listening, the latest from uh, Bedouin. Brilliant track. Set the control uh, for the heart. Set the control for the heart of the sun. Cross down Rebels Records.
brand new from uh, Kotelet and Zadak. The track called uh, Azizam. Just out now on uh, Exploited Records. And just before this, um, Jose v- Vizakainu. The track called uh, Just in Time. Track uh, just uh, out on uh, Magician on Duty. For all of you who just tuned in, my name is Vic Vixen. This is Groupology Session. From this Thursday, I'm starting from uh, 4 o'clock. And because of that, I have a very special guest today. I was listening to her mix the last few days, and um, I'm telling you, this is the best one so far I had part of my Groovology podcast series. We have uh, like a half an hour before we start. Just before mix, uh, you're gonna be able to hear our little chat, me and Nikki. We talked about the uh, scene in um, Canada, about music, about production, Lee Barridge. It's a short chat, but Anyway, stay tuned.
locked and loud. Broadcasting from 10,000 feet in the sky. Fever rising. You're listening to Groovology Session.
things over That's uh, all for now from me. It's time for our main guest. Let me just say a few words about her. As I said, um, my drive time, uh, prime time uh, debut is kicking off with a very special guest. It's part of my uh, Groovology podcast series. Featuring uh, Nikki Sadeki from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Her free scheme radio artist uh, of the week uh, set reached uh, over 12k. Gain uh, new fun and uh, support from uh, across the globe. After that, uh, she was uh, offered to host a resident uh, show on uh, Frisky Radio, the show called Allure. Her sets uh, have been described as uh, musical journeys, charming uh, listeners and uh, at the same time inviting them to dive into their own uh, individual world of sensation. Okay, that's pretty much uh, it. Now let's say what uh, Nikki has to say. We had a little chat the other day, about five, six minutes, just before the mix. So. After this track, uh, Soul Button, the track called Master of My Fate. I'm gonna play a little interview with uh, Nikki, so stay tuned. To watch things from 10,000 feet in the sky, fever rising. Okay, Nikki, how are you? Let's start. So there's not much uh, about uh, Nikki Sadeki, the person online, but uh, your mixes uh, seems to be very popular globally. Who is Nikki Sadeki? <laughs> well, I'm originally from Iran. Um, I was born in Tehran, um, it's the capital city, and I lived there until I was uh, 15. Uh, that's when uh, me and my parents, we moved to Vancouver. Um, my parents, uh, they just love music, both of them. So I grew up in a household listening to uh, lots of blues, jazz, 60s and 70s rock. And as a teenager, as I was getting older, I was really heavily influenced by punk rock and heavy metal and uh, the grunge movement. I, I even started playing the guitar around then. I think I was like 11. And um, I just started composing my own songs here and there. Um, like thinking back right now, they all kind of like sound kind of juvenile and emo. My first uh, taste of electronic music was uh, through my dad actually, when uh, he introduced me to uh, Mike Oldfield. Um, I was really fascinated uh, by what I was hearing and all the different sounds and moods. And so from there, I started to explore different uh, genres of electronic music myself. And I was honestly hooked. It's been uh, almost a year since uh, you started your show on Frisky Radio. Tell us about your show and uh, how much it uh, has influenced your life so far. 
Yes, it's been almost a year already. Um, it's been great, really. I love Frisky Radio and having my show. It's been an incredible experience so far. Um, it's a lot of fun putting together the mixes and um, the listeners have been incredible. Um, they're so kind and I receive so many heartfelt messages. It just feels great getting that validation from the listeners because it means I've successfully managed to connect with them through music and they've got the message I was trying to share or they've understood the story I was trying to tell, if you want to put it that way. I really listened uh, to your mixes a lot and uh, I just love your music selection. Tell me what's uh, next. Uh, any plans on production releases? Um, I'm still tiptoeing around with the idea of production. Um, I want to do it for the right reasons, you know. Um, I've been told multiple times to produce something and, you know, just to put my name on some sort of a production and, you know, just to, in order to get my name out there and to get recognition. Um, I have no rush to be honest and I want to start producing the day I feel like I need to express myself differently. This actually reminds me of uh, a conversation I recently had with Lee Burridge on the topic of production. And uh, he told me, uh, you just have to do what is right for you. And that really stuck with me because simply put right now, I just love DJing and taking listeners on journeys, uh, sharing what I feel with the crowds. That's just what I love. I want others to feel the same emotions I feel. And that just brings me a lot of satisfaction. So, um, and also I've been, I, I consider myself as really blessed so far in my journey in this industry. Uh, I've got to know a lot of amazing, amazing young producers and sort of had a knack of connecting people. I've been introducing uh, new musicians, producers, promoters to one another uh, with the hopes of getting the conversation going and ideas floating. Um, Because honestly, because at the end of the day, uh, it's all about the love of music and bringing people together. I always say this, uh, that as I travel, um, it becomes so clear to me that we are all part of a very big global family and we are all sort of like connected and it's just really beautiful. And last question, uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, Canadian dancing, artists, uh, nightlife and so on? I'm sure a lot of our listeners are taking this part of our planet for granted uh, when it comes to music. And I must say they're missing a lot. <laughs> well, Canada is a very big country. If uh, you want to go across the country, you're just talking about like a five to six hour flight. Um, so the nightlife and the party scene is rather different depending on what city you're in. And it's quite subjective to your personal preferences too. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be exposed to the scene in Toronto and Montreal and um, I still haven't been to Ottawa but they all do have a great uh, deep house space there. I like the East Coast scene a lot. Uh, the events, venues, crowds, producers and uh, DJs, everything, everything's really, um, everything works in harmony in a way. Um, now Vancouver is on the other side of the country and on the west coast. and. The underground scene is just so vibrant and it's thriving with many, many, many talented locals. Generally speaking, uh, there is just a lot of talent in Canada and I've met so many creative artists and they're all very, very humble. I almost forgot to uh, tell us about uh, Deep House Vancouver. Right, um, so I started the Deep House Vancouver page about a year ago. Um, I really didn't have anything planned for it, so I was just, you know, me simply reposting what I thought to be of good music. And gradually, it started to have a following, and um, that was then I started to ask my fellow DJ friends and producers to put together mixes. And uh, so we now showcase two to three mixes per month, and we just, uh, we just uh, started uh, doing premieres for EPs and releases. Um, obviously, there's a lot of room for expansion in the future and uh, turning it into an online electronic music magazine and to be able to throw events uh, either locally or in collaboration with other channels in other cities and hopefully other countries one day um, or even just turning it into a music label it's just, just the possibilities are quite endless uh, I'm just excited about how things are progressing and I'm just really you know just having fun running the channel I want to thank you for your time and for accepting my invitation. It's an honor to have you in my show, really. I'm really looking forward to see what will Niki Sadeki accomplish in music in the future. In the name of Fever Radio Crew, I wish you all the best. 
Absolutely. Uh, the pleasure is all mine, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. Fever, delivering proper underground electronic music from a global team to a global audience.